What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. I am Pitchy Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy. What's up, Will? Ninja, these Red Sox starters, man. What, what do we bring back Pedro and Roger Clemens and Babe Ruth and Cy Young? What do we got going on with this team, Ninja? Basically, that's it. They're, I mean, break them up. Speaking of the Red Sox. He's seen that. Red Sox, I just said. <laughs> Speaking of the Red Sox, they most certainly do not suck. Cutter Crawford had six Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs, including this paint dish fastball and this sweeper. And it kept his ERA under two, mind you. Dude, he looks really good, man. He looks really good. I love that little T-Rex arm action he's got. I love the short arm action. If you got a little short arm action, you can still throw absolute cheese whiz. He faced Eric Miller, who had 1K in one scoreless inning as the opener and had this changeup. Kenta Maeda had 5Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He had these splitters and sliders. He picked up four whiffs on his splitter and three on his slider. He faced Miles Michaelis, who had 4Ks in six innings, giving up three runs and had these fastballs, including this painted two-seamer. Colin Ray had 5Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up four hits. His ERA now is 2.67. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Should I see him come on Eileen again? That's terrible. <laughs> he had these fastball sinker and sweeper. And he faced Zach Eflin, who had six Ks in five and two thirds innings, giving up three runs. And had this fastball cutter and curveball. Chris the Snake Flexen had is. four Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this change up and curveball. He faced Bailey Ober, who had three Ks in six innings, giving up four runs, and had this paintish cutter and this fastball that got a really late swing. Seth Lugo had six Ks in seven innings, giving up one run on two hits. His ERA now is 1.6. He had these fastballs, including this backdoor two-seamer, this slider, and this changeup. He faced Chris Bassett, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had this elevated two-seamer and sweeper. Ross Stripling had two strikeouts and six scoreless innings, giving up three hits. He had this sinker. He faced Quinn Priester at three Ks and six innings, giving up two earned runs, and had these elevated fastballs. Joe Musgrove went six innings with nine Ks. Nice. Giving up two runs and had these fastballs and curveballs. And I thought his curveball shape looked back to what he looks like when he's going really well. These were hammers. He faced Graham Ashcraft, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up no earned runs, and had these sliders. Trevor Williams had three Ks in five innings, giving up no runs. He has really boring stuff, but his ERA is not boring. His ERA is now 2.27, and he's low-key nasty, I guess. He had these sweepers. He faced Andrew Heaney, who had four Ks in seven innings, giving up one run, and had these fastballs. Tristan McKenzie had six Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. His fastball velo was up a little bit, which I think is a good sign. Appears to have ironed out some of his mechanical issues. It's not up a ton, but it's up 0.7 miles per hour to 91.6. It was 90.9. His big pitch this game was his curveball. He had nine swings and misses on these hammers. Filthy stuff from McKenzie. He faced Justin Verlander who had two Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. And had these fastballs, including this elevated fastball for a sword. And apparently, Angel Hernandez's eyes are so good, he doesn't need to appeal this. He's got this. What a legendary umpire he is. Never makes a mistake. Luis Heel had five Ks in six and a third innings, giving up no runs on two hits. He had these fastballs, including this 97-mile-an-hour heater that just bears in on you, and also had this filthy changeup. He faced Corbin Burns, who had six Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, but they were both on a two-run homer that barely made it over the wall, so that doesn't count. He had these cutters and sliders. Rodery Munoz looked outstanding yesterday. He had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up one run on three hits. He had these backdoor two simmers that were filthy. Look at this, 19 and 20 inches back to the plate. He also had these cutters and sliders, and... I don't know where this guy came from, but he looks pretty good. He faced Dakota Hudson, who had two Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs, had this curveball and slider. Zach Wheeler had six Ks in five innings, giving up one run. He dominated with his fastballs, had this painted backdoor cutter, these sweepers, including this one. He has a drop third strike that shows you the perfect way 
that I would probably get on base against Zach Wheeler. Swing at anything and hope the catcher misses it, and you could beat it out to first base, which, honestly, I have little tiny legs. There's no way I could do that. I'm making it up. But here's an overlay of his fastball and sweeper, and it shows why you might swing at a sweeper in the other batter's box. These things are absolutely perfectly tunneled. Look at that. Filth. He faced Patrick Sandoval, who was low-key nasty yesterday. Sandoval had 10 strikeouts in five innings, giving up two runs. He had this sinker, but it was really about his off-speed stuff. He dominated with sliders, sweepers, curveballs, change-ups. He threw about 80% off-speed pitches this game, which I looked at the game beforehand and I was like, his fastball gets absolutely shellacked. He better throw off-speed pitches. And I actually took the under this game, thinking that he wouldn't adjust. Well, I was wrong. Patrick Sandoval, you're a stud. Or at least yesterday you were. Yoshinobu Yamamoto was outstanding yesterday with 5Ks and six scoreless innings. Lowering his ERA now to 2.91. If you remember where he started, if you took out that first inning in Korea, his ERA would right now be 1.64. That's how good he is. He had these splitters, picked up a sword, and these absolutely beautiful curveballs. You can see why I call this a yo-yo curveball. He releases it with his thumb on top, and it gives him crazy movement. He has over 36% whiff rate on both his splitter and his curveball. Opponents barely hit his splitter. They're hitting 088 against his splitter. And his curveball, because of that unique release, gets 6.5 inches more drop than the average curveball at that velo and 12 and a half inches more break. He has almost perfect active spin on that curveball, again, because of that release the fifth best active spin in all of baseball at 94%. The more active spin you get, the more it goes into the movement of the pitch. And that's why he gets such filthy movement. He faced Jordan Montgomery at 1K in three innings, giving up six runs. He's still shaken by that whole B incident. We'll give him a break. He had this curveball. Shota Imanaga was outstanding again yesterday with seven strikeouts and seven scoreless innings, giving up three hits. His ERA right now, dropping no innings at all, is 0.78. Freaking stud. You know what uh, teams are saying when they're facing him? They said, I'm not going to hit it. <laughs> oh, he, Will stayed up all night thinking of that. Well done, Will. I will uh, I'll be here all week, guys. Again, he was outstanding yesterday with these elevated fastballs and these wicked splitters. And I love his mindset on the mound. He is a craftsman. Look at him getting upset at himself at this pitch that doesn't hit his spot. He shakes his head like, no, that's not what was supposed to happen. I love it. Or maybe he was upset at the baseball. I don't know, but I love You're it. You're saying, I'm not going to throw that again. <laughs> You're killing me. Here's Imanaga's mechanics that show you why he's able to get away with an elevated fastball constantly despite not having overpowering velo. It's a pretty low release point, and he's a short dude. It means he's, he's throwing kind of uphill. And it just doesn't intersect with hitter's swing paths. He faced Jose Buto, who was very good yesterday, too, with six strikeouts and six innings, giving up one run on four hits. His ERA right now is 2.57. He had his sliders for a sword and this changeup. Chris Sale was probably my filthiest starting pitcher yesterday. He had nine Ks in five innings, giving up one run. He had these fastballs, but the story of the game were these sliders. And this bowel-locking slider to the big dumper. Coincidence? <laughs> and had this filthy back foot slider that I think when he threw this, I yelled out, holy f***ing sh Chris Sale is filthy. He had nine whiffs on his fastball this game, seven on his slider. And I know the camera angle doesn't do him justice, but his fastball had up to 21 inches of run. He faced Emerson Hancock, who was eh yesterday with four Ks and three and two thirds innings, giving up five runs, but only one of them were earned. So that keeps the Mariners streak of two earned runs or less by their starters. He did give up four walks and this fastball slider and changeup. Now one of my filthiest relievers, Amir Garrett had these two Ks, but I love this mound visit from Ron Washington. This is a pure baseball guy move. Comes out there, says, nobody else come out with me. I got this. Just pumps up Amir Garrett fantastic work by Ron Washington. I would run through a brick wall for this dude. Just great feel. 
Araldus Chapman had this fastball and slider, and coincidentally, Araldus Chapman is the only guy that Amir Garrett wouldn't fight in MLB. Remember, he took on the entire Pirates bench. He would not fight Araldus Chapman. And here's him talking you about know, it. Araldus Chapman, of course. I, I, I know. Oh, Araldus, yeah. So. You, might, you might run from that, right? Yeah, yeah, I might. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't play the heart game. Like, just because you're small and you try somebody who's big, like, and you get beat up, you can, I don't, I, to me, I don't want you to be like, man, at least I had the heart to go out there and do it. No, bro. Like, I'm going to be like, if somebody, be, I'm like, okay, you got it, brother. Hey, see you later. Like, that's, I'm good. I'm okay with my decision. And I'm all right with that. I'm like, hey, you got it, bro. Don't worry. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I don't want no cool points for, for going to fight somebody and getting beat up. So guess what? I'm probably, I probably let Chapman get that one. I'm like, hey, hey, Chappy, you got it, bro. Much love, dog. Much love. Kyle Finnegan was really good yesterday with these splitters and sweepers and had an Expelliarmus splitter to Seeger. Hunter Harvey had this 99-mile-an-hour heater. Luke Jackson had these fastballs. Alex Lang had these wicked curveballs. Joey Wentz painted with this fastball. Ryan Presley had this fastball and slider. Mason Miller had this wicked slider. And if you look right now, his FIP is negative... 0.07, which means if he was a starter for the A's, the A's could be shut out and they would win. I don't make the rules. It's true. Orion Kirkring had this sweeper and fastball, and he is a filthy mother f-er. Adam Adovino had this cutter and jump back sweeper. And Sean Reed Foley had these fastballs and curveball. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. At number five, I'm going to give that overlay of Zach Wheeler's fastball and sweeper. That is filthy. And number four, we got with Shota Imanaga's splitters because when he's throwing that splitter well, Will, what do hitters say? I'm not going to hit it. <laughs> and number three, we have Yoshinobu Yamamoto's yo-yo curveball. Just beautiful. And number two, Chris Sale's ridiculous sliders. And number one, Clay Holmes. Holy crap. Look at Clay Holmes here. His sinker movement, absolutely cartoonish. I mean, ridiculous stuff. And then he throws a sweeper off of this. And then when you overlay these two pitches, look at this. You're going to go cross-eyed. This is one of the most ridiculous things you will ever see. This looks like prime Blake Trinan. And I don't say that lightly because prime Blake Trinan was the absolute filthiest thing on earth. And Clay Holmes, tip of the cap to you. He has a 0.00 ERA, and he's given up one walk all season long. Sherlock Holmes, you are the filthiest pitcher of the day. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. I'm so glad the camera cut away from this, because I thought we were going to end up with the Chris Farley Chippendale scene from SNL. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Ben Brown for 4Ks or more. Then take Carlos Rodon for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Edward Cabrera for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?